Hello. Just a quick update on the hair. First, how are we doing? What do you think? Yep, um, it's been almost three months. Three months since I've died. Yep, it's been three months. And that's the growth. Um, a little less since I did this one little part. But, <clears throat> yeah, that's three months so far. So I'm, you know, trying to find ways to, I'm growing out my bangs. And um, that's a process too. So <clears throat> that's that. Just wanted to show that. How are y'all doing? I'm telling you, I know we're all feeling the same way, but for an extrovert, it's doubly hard. If you're an introvert, I know I've got several friends that are introverts. My sister's an introvert. She says, really, life hasn't changed a whole lot for her because she doesn't go anywhere. She doesn't like to be going places, doesn't like to do things. Um, but for someone like me, this is a huge challenge. And it's not going to end anytime soon. And a part of it is due to the fact that there are still people out there that just refuse to get on board. I was in a store a week ago tomorrow. Today is Saturday, by the way, the 4th. I had to run out. And I had to go out. First time I'd gone out in over a week. But my granddaughter's birthday was Tuesday. I had to get some things. And I'll tell you about that in a second. And had to get groceries for a friend um, who had none. <clears throat> and I'm in a store. And if you've been out in the stores, at least here in New York, uh, that we're taking every precaution. I am very, I am blessed that we are doing as much as we are. For instance, um, there's tape on the floor at all the stores, six feet apart, red tape, and everybody's to be standing in line six feet apart. You are not allowed to put your groceries up onto the conveyor belt until the person ahead of you has cashed out and the cashier sprays down the whole conveyor belt and the keypad. And then you can put your groceries on and each person. So it, it's time consuming, but you know what? Good. There are also in Wegmans. I don't know if you have Wegmans where you are. They're putting plexiglass between the cashiers and the people. Great. They're also being told that they can wear masks and gloves if they'd like to. Good. I went out with a mask and gloves. Um, and I'm in line. And um, and I had knew exactly, you know, and also certain, this particular grocery store, you can only go in one door. I mean, they have and out another. And then as soon as you're done with a cart, somebody takes that cart, sprays it down and puts it back in to the store. So no carts out in the parking lot. You can't, you have to go a certain route through the store now. You can't just browse. There's no browsing. It's rooted out for you. Yes, you can go down every single aisle, but it's a route. You can't just nilly-dilly. Anyway, I'm standing in line. I went in, got my girlfriend's groceries. She didn't know anything about it, by the way. And I dropped them at her door, got back in my car, called her, said, open your door at her apartment. When she came to the door, she started crying. She was so happy. And I drove away. Um, but... My story is getting longer as we speak, right? So I'm standing in line and I I hear this couple in, in here where I live in my county, the majority of cases, the highest percentage of cases are 20 and 30 year olds, mm -hmm. 20 and 30 year olds. So uh, I sit, hear this couple and they're directly behind me. I mean, I can practically feel them breathing down my neck. They're right behind me. And I'm thinking, are they looking at something at that? Why are they right behind me? And so I turn around. Now, mind you, I'm donning a mask and gloves. This couple is just talking and chatting like there's no tomorrow. And I turn around. I, I look at the floor and I point and I go, there's lines on the floor for a reason. You're supposed to be behind it. I turned around. 
because I'm like, don't lose your temper. It's not going to, it's not going to fix anything. It's not going to make anything. And the woman says to the man, Jesus loves me. Does he love you? And the man says, yes, he does. Well, and then she starts spouting off about how God, and she doesn't know me. She doesn't know anything about me. She doesn't know that I'm, I'm born again, Christian, but she clearly thinks she's a Christian and starts spouting off about how God is not the the author of fear and blah, blah, and goes, and then they're mocking out the mask and gloves that I'm wearing. And this is ridiculous. And people are overreacting and I'm just standing there straight ahead, waiting for my turn to put my stuff on the, uh, up to be cashed out because I'm a slow burn, slow burn. And I'm like, that's not how Christians act. In my opinion, that's not how you're not making, you weren't a good testimony. If I was not a believer, you would have just turned me completely away from God, from that language. But it's those people, and there's more of them out there than not. That's what scares me. There's too many of those people. I call them Kovo idiots, and that's what they are. They're idiots. So I was able to do that, drop the groceries off, and then um, because of my granddaughter's birthday, first time turning seven, first time in seven years that I could not be with her on her birthday. Very difficult. Very difficult. We're all dealing with difficulties. But, um, hold on. Get in my eye. Uh, I had bought two big poster boards and um, had her gift already. Balloons. I decorated these two poster boards with happy birthday, another one with, and I have, you know, I'm a crafty girl. So I have all these jewels and glittery things that I hot glued all around it and hot glued glittery stones that wrote Olivia, um, seven, happy seventh, seven reasons why we love you. And I listed seven reasons why we love her and, um, called my daughter and said, please open up the garage door. I'm going to come in and just set it. I would have liked to set everything up in her yard, but it was muddy and wet. So they did. And I set everything up in their garage with the balloons and the the posters and her gifts sitting there. And then I left and called back and said, you know, please FaceTime me or resume me when you let her know, you know, open the door and let her go out in the garage and surprise her. So I was able to be a part of that. But that was why I was out. I don't go out any other reason. Now it's been tomorrow will be a whole week since I've been out again. Um, trying to let Sid, my husband, do 99% of the running around. So that's how we're dealing with it. But it's it's still very lonely. And I can't imagine people who are completely alone. At least I have my husband and my dogs here. But. And I I make a point of reaching out to somebody every single day, either via Zoom, FaceTime, phone calls. Um, Spoke to my uncle and his wife who live right in Manhattan, right in the heart of this New York City. And um, he's in his early 80s. They both are, um, he owns his own architecture firm, excuse me in Manhattan and she owns her own art gallery in Manhattan and they travel the world. They are world travelers. They live a great lifestyle and they're hunkered down in their little apartment in Manhattan, not moving, but they're both well. So praise God, nothing, you know, they're still healthy and they're doing what they need to do. I don't know where you live. The numbers continue to climb here. Uh, they, they said that they would until at least the end of April. So we haven't really hit the apex yet where I live, but the, the number of people being tested have gone down, which that's an encouraging number. So less people are coming in to be tested or being tested daily in my County. We've had three deaths in my county. And one was the first one was a 80 something year old woman with major health issues. And then two days ago, we had two deaths the same day. 
60s, a woman in her 60s, very ill, major health issues. And then a couple hours later, a man in his late 80s with major issues. So, so far, the three people who have died from this all were very sick to begin with. Is that encouraging? No, it just shows, you know, I mean, I pray for their families. It's it's a hard time, very hard time. Mm-hmm. Um, so my daily routine, talk about Groundhog Day. Back when I was really, really sick, if you watched any of my videos way back, um, I'm, you know, it's back to doing that, except I'm not majorly ill. It's just like every day, it's like, well, I'm going to do the same thing again today that I did the last 14 days. I get up. I've been losing weight, by the way. Oh, the the good again. Walking every single day, walking and walking quicker. I'm I, I notice my pace is getting quicker and quicker. I'm losing weight. Um, my hair's growing out, which is you know this is a, like I said, you know what better time because whoa, you wouldn't want to go out. People would be like, can't you at least buy a box of dye? Um, but I'm. I've made up my mind with this. I'm not going back. I'm going to go. So what do you guys think? Can you imagine me this color all the way? Can you? I try to. Um, so far, I'm not not hating the gray. It doesn't look yellowy to me. This lighting isn't great. But we'll see. Anyway, so losing weight, growing up my hair. So I get up. I'll tell you my routine. I get up. I clean every surface down, every light switch, every every surface, every door handle, wipe, spray. Praise God, my stepmother owns her own um, commercial cleaning supply business. So I literally have a gallon jug of hand sanitizer. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. It's a gallon jug. Um, so I have plenty and disinfectant spray. So I, I'm good with that. Uh, so I will walk around and every single thing that's been touched or breathed on because my husband does go in and out quite a bit. I will say that he is anyway, that's the first thing I do in the morning. Then I get my slim fast, (laughs) my slim fast, and that's my breakfast and I'll drink it while I, well, I've done my devotionals and then I listen to a preaching a word that I, uh, I've been doing this for years and years. This is just my part of my morning routine. Once I'm done with that, um, I'll go get cleaned up. I get dressed every day. I have a lot of friends that don't even get dressed anymore. They cut their morning, their day jammies and their night jammies. I don't, I get dressed every single day. I get dressed every single day. Um, because it just makes me feel a little bit more normal. Do I wear makeup? Clearly, I don't wear any makeup. I'm looking rather old and sick, but I don't care. Um, But I do get dressed. And then after that, out for my walk. And was able to do it again today outside. I love being outside. Fresh air. We need to get outside. It. Oh, I'm telling you. Yesterday I could not. I had it was raining, so I had to be on the treadmill, and that day was a bad day for me. Very bad day. The days that I cannot get out and walk are not good days for me. The days that I can get out and just walk, and you know, people are keeping the distance. We we nobody walks on the same side of the road. We'll you know, but we are exchanging hellos and um, getting by. So then I do my walk. I come back. By the time I get back from my walk. It's actually lunchtime and I have my second slim fast. <laughs> yes. And then I get on the computer and I play games and I watch YouTube. I don't watch any TV till night. Um, I'm just giving you exactly what I do. Seriously. It's it's sad. And then I talk on the phone or I, you know, or I'll FaceTime somebody. And then in the late afternoon, I listened to the newscast, our local newscast, because our county executor, executive will give them a rundown of all the numbers for the day. And I'm, rec- I'm journaling everything. I'm keeping, I'm, I'm keeping a journal. I always journaled anyways, but now I'm really journaling seriously and keeping track of everything for 
future people to read this, what it was like to live through this pandemic. I actually tried to get my grandkids to do that, but they weren't interested. Anyway, uh, so I'll listen to the news and write, and I record all the numbers, you know, how many more were, you know, came back positive today, um, how many more were in critical condition, how many uh, were released from mandatory quarantine, how many have recovered, how many are just hospitalized altogether. You know, I write down all the numbers. And again, um, the highest percentage is between 20 and 30 year olds. The lowest percentage is from 16 above because we're staying home. And after that, I read and I read and I read and then dinner and then I have a regular dinner. My husband and I take turns making dinner um, and we'll have, I have dinner. And then I, from then on, I'm either on my phone playing on my phone or watching, then I'll watch TV until bedtime. And that's what I do every day, every day, every day. What about you? I need to get some yarn so I can just crochet a long, long uh, scarf or a blanket because that's all I know how to do, crochet or net. Uh, I have lots of things to do for crafts, but I don't do, you know, my crafts are for me to do with my grandkids. And let me tell you, it's been really rough. The saying, um, absence makes the heart grow fonder. When we are able to see one another again, I told the family, we are going to throw the biggest party. By then, maybe the pool will be opened. It won't, we won't be swimming in it, but we will have a big barbecue in my backyard and I will not be able to get enough kisses and hugs. I miss my family horribly. I miss them so bad. I can talk to them on the phone. I can Zoom with them or FaceTime with them, but it's just not the same. And I know you're all feeling the same way. So I'm praying every single day, as I'm sure you all are, that uh, we are going to get through this. This is my opinion. This is my belief. I, I believe that the Lord is allowing this to give us a little inkling of what the end times would be. And if you can't live through this, you don't want to be left behind. I just That's all I'm going to say, is that you don't want to be left behind because it's going to be a whole lot worse than this. This is rough. So I hope that you're all finding something to keep you from losing your minds. It's, it's hard not to, though, right? But we don't have a choice. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay away from your family. Oh, I'll say this. I, I've been saying it right along, but it's like, no, you can't see your family. Believe me, I want to see my family. Can't. Um, a friend of mine's daughter's boyfriend's family, and they're not from around here. Their daughter, so her boyfriend's parents, who are in my my age group, um, he and his sister don't live at home. They're older. and um, But she was infected and didn't know it at the time and went and visited. They went and visited mom and dad. Got them and sick and the, and the father's in the hospital dying. He has heart disease. And now he's dying because his daughter, they couldn't stay away from each other. I don't see my son. I don't see my daughters. I see my grandkids. And so that's a perfect example. The man is in the hospital because they want to see their family. Well, was it worth it? No. So I'm sorry. I'm stop. I'm ending this on a bad note. I said I wanted my, my vlogs to be encouraging, but who knew that? We were going to have a pandemic, right? Um, so, by the way, my house has never been so clean. And, I mean, there's nothing for me to clean. 
I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned until I can't clean anymore. I wanted to show you this jug. If you didn't believe me, this is my jug. Yes. Made it up March 25th. There was two, two things that I had to put in it. And so now I've put some of it in this. I have four or five of these. I have a spray bottle somewhere of it. Yeah, so I have a whole gallon. I will not run out. Besides, I had three of the regular Purells already. But just wanted to show you that I truly have a gallon jug of this stuff. But my house, you know, it's like I don't know what to do because I vacuumed and mopped and dusted and there's nothing other than <laughs> there's nothing for me to do. <laughs> it's like I can't clean anymore. Oh, well. So... I'm going to let you go. Just wandering around the house trying to find things to do. I think I did show you all my my projects, right? Showed you over there. I showed you all my projects, right? Showed you the, yeah, I showed you all that. Okay. Well, I hope that was entertaining. Okay, God bless. Um, I'll come back on again in another, maybe, I don't know, to show you the that lighting's better. There it is. So I don't, I don't know how, how many inches growth there. See, remember, I dyed this. Um, that's why there's not as much growth. I dyed that back in February, but I only dyed that. None of this has been dyed since December. Okay, well, anyway, see you later. Bye.